Hello everybody, Lucas Welsh here, and this is the latest, uh, well this is basically a restoration here almost, um, that I did on this old violin. This is an old, uh, violin from Japan, label says made in Nippon, that's all it is. Um, back in the early, you know, late 1800s and early 1900s, they were starting to do a lot of, uh, uh, a lot more regulations on incoming trade from foreign countries into Canada and the United States, into the United States mostly. That's where most of it was coming in. Um, and they started uh, uh, requiring origin labeling back then, basically. And so um, at certain periods, you can tell by what it says, if it says, you know, made in Bavaria or made in such and such or made in Germany or made in Nippon, you know, kind of fits in a certain range from, uh, you know, what is it, 1914 to 1921, I do believe, because then in 1921, uh, things changed again, and they required, uh, you know, a country of origin. So then all the labels would have started to read uh, made in Japan instead of made in Nippon. Okay. Um, anyway, a little trivia for you there. So, um, so this violin had, had some major cracks in the top. The back and the sides were clean. Um, had no fingerboard, no pegs, no fittings, no case. I mean, this fiddle came to me, uh, you know, it was all together, barely. It had some scotch tape holding it together, to be real honest with you. Uh, it took that, you know, that took me the longest to get the old scotch tape residue off. I had to do a little bit of uh, creative work there. Uh, it was bare white wood, but it had been sealed with some sort of sealers so there's a number of uh fairly major cracks in here and you can you can still see them but they did seal up pretty decently on this instrument um so there's there's a lot of cleats under here there's probably you know the better part of i don't know 20 cleats in this instrument um there was some big chunks taken off uh there was a big chunk taken off of here um, and then each of these top corners was blown out. So we replaced them and, and kind of made them look look original. And then we re-varnished the whole thing. The whole violin needed to re-varnish because there was nothing on it. So we've got a nice varnish on it. And I am pleasantly, pleasantly surprised with the tone. It's always uh, kind of a crab shoot when you, when you get an instrument like this in and you're trying to figure out uh, you know, is it going to sound good? Everybody wants to know if it's going to sound good. Well, that's a pretty tough question when it's in, you know, pieces or, or not together. Um, you know, I can tell because I've got some equipment, you know, that tells me the thicknesses of the woods, even if the violin is together, I can tell the thicknesses and stuff like that. And you can determine, you know, if there's, uh, if it's been taken to an appropriate level that it has the potential to vibrate nice and openly. Um, and I could tell right away that this one had potential to vibrate because uh, you could just tell by by tapping on the top plate even that it was that it was not thick like a lot of these violins are. But this is kind of there's a good period for some of these uh, Japanese and, and Chinese made instruments, you know, from that early 1900s, uh, late 1800s. There's some good there's some good instruments in there actually. They sound nice. This one doesn't have much for a you know, it, it's fairly plain on the back, you know. Um, the the top would be like a medium, you know, a medium grain spruce, I would consider this. Um, but it, it's got some, you know, it's got some halfway decent scroll work on it. And it's blocked out. The corners are blocked out. The linings are mitered in there. It's got a K branded into the... Uh, the neck block from the inside, which I, I can't really find anything out, but I'm guessing that's probably a uh, You know a maker's mark of some sort So I'd like to if any of you guys know what that might mean if there's a name, you know, maybe he built specifically good instruments, but anyway, here's a little sound sample of this
I'm impressed with the tone, and it's it's going to get better as it gets played. This violin hasn't gotten played, um, hasn't been played in a, in a long time. Um, it was kind of found in the uh, the the daughter found it, and and uh, she thought it was her father's, but she didn't really ever know her father playing. And then uh, now they believe that it may have belonged to the grandmother, which would fit the timeline well. Um, I just got a few finishing touches here and this fiddle is ready to go out the door. Cheers.